So do astrological predictions imply that we don't have free will, especially when, say, astrological predictions as given in some Bhrugu Shastra, they very factual, very accurately determine certain uh, things about our life. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, our past karma does determine certain major landmarks in our life. So, suppose, say if I am going from here to Melbourne, and I board a flight to Melbourne. Once I board the flight to Melbourne, the trajectory is more or less fixed. And I can see, okay, I am here now, I am now come to Calcutta. Now I am coming to Bangkok. Now I am coming to Singapore. So that trajectory is more or less fixed. And once I have boarded that flight, I can't change the trajectory. At the same time, within that, when the plane is going along that trajectory, I have still choices. So, it may also be determined once I take a particular seat, who is going to sit next to me, that may also be fixed. Who is sitting right, left, to my left, who is going to sit to my right, that may also be fixed. But within that, what I do, I still have free will. You know, I can be in a very argumentative mood and I fight, quarrel with the person next to me, I quarrel with the person next to me. And then, or I may just you know, become abusive and attack somebody and then as soon as I come out of the flight, I am under arrest. <laughs> or I find that a person sitting next to me is a very influential businessman and I come up with a business deal. And, you know, I have a lot of prospects ahead of me after I come out of the flight. So, the once I am in the flight, a large pattern of my life is fixed. Once I have boarded the flight. But still within that also, I have substantial freedom. So astrology can predict, so basically when we start on a life journey, it's like if you consider the body to be like a plane, we have ascended the plane. And at a very broad contour, the body is in a, pl is a plane journey from birth, uh, through youth, through middle age, through old age, ultimately to death. That is the trajectory that is fixed. So that trajectory to some extent can be told by astrology. So things like, you know, obviously if you want to go on a flight, they can tell us what, where are you going to go, where is the plane, where is the plane going to be at this time, where is the plane going to be at this time, where is the plane going to be at this time, you know, who is going to sit, be sitting next to you over here, who is going to be ahead of you, who is going to be behind you, those things are fixed, but still, what we do is not fixed. So within that also, sometimes we may say, oh, I want to change my seat, I want to go from here and I sit somewhere else, some amount of freedom is there. So astrology does determine certain things in our life and those who are uh, accurate astrologers they may be able to tell us about these things so still that does not mean everything is determined so for example i have to take it in, again very generic terms if i am born in india then a large percent of the people whom i am going to associate with are indians that is just fixed by my birth in india now, I may emigrate to some other country and then my people around me may change. But even there also, you know, I may want to associate with Indians because that's what I'm familiar with. And I may form a group, then even then I'll have a large number of Indians with me. But still I may interact with some other people also. So, it's not necessary that the predetermination of certain things or the capacity to predetermine certain, certain things necessarily implies that nothing is in our hands or everything is predetermined. We do have free will. And one challenge in dealing with astrology is to <coughs> know in advance which factors which are predicted are right or which are wrong. We may not be able to know that based on how precise the astrologer is, how precise the particular kind of astrology is, or then how, how, how much of an initiative we take in our own lives, especially if we start practicing bhakti, then often astrologers tell that that is also an important element which may change the astrological predictions to some extent. So that's why we don't have to over depend on astrology. First of all, in principle, astrology does not mean that we don't have free will. It does mean that certain things in our life are determined and certain things are still malleable and choosable for us. Okay. And regarding the other question about Say if um, 
during marriages if some people if a couple wants to get married how much should they rely on astrology for making choices and sometimes some marriages may work out well even when the astrological charts they are not consulted or they may not match or they are not match they don't match still the marriage may work out well so how important is it to consult astrological charts there are broadly three we could say there are three broad categories of knowledge or first we can say two there is paravidya and there is aparavidya paravidya is spiritual knowledge hmm? the knowledge of the soul knowledge of god and how the soul and god can be connected that is spiritual that is what the bhagavad gita primarily focuses on that is what the bhagavatam focuses on then there is aparavidya aparavidya is non transcendental or material knowledge now material knowledge that is useful for living in this world and pursuing a goal beyond this world now that material knowledge may be acquirable in different ways see in material knowledge everything is not fixed all the time so for example ayurveda is a particular form of medicine that's a part of aparavidya and ayurveda can help people get treated and cured but it is not that this when we start practicing spirituality everybody has to take only ayurvedic medicine and you cannot take any other form of medicine no there are different forms of medicine whatever we feel inspired to take whatever has worked for us whatever we find that the teachers are trustworthy we may take that form of medicine and basically we move on with functionally so just as, so with, that means with respect to the uh, paravidya that is essential for us to function in this world For, for us, that is essential for us to pursue life's ultimate goal. But as far as the aparavidya is concerned, how much we need to use it, how much we feel inspired to use it, that can vary according to time, place, circumstance. So, with respect to the use of astrology, a lot of factors come into the picture. That, as I said, astrology does determine. Uh, can determine uh, to a significant extent the broad natures of people so sometimes some people astrology may tell that they are not really compatible and when that is the case those individuals can they still have a say a happy marriage it's possible if they have a high level of tolerance you know that yes there are differences and those differences will cause conflicts but our purpose is higher and we keep that in mind so it's not that the astrology alone determines whether the marriage is going to be successful or not that is one factor an important factor which should describes the overall compatibility of people uh, in terms of uh, their astrological charts but even people who are overall compatible if you know if they don't spend time with each other or they harp too much on minor uh, minor points of contention uh, then even their relationship may get spoiled on the other hand people even if they are widely variable they are widely variant in their nature as per astrology but if they work on commonalities they may they may uh, they may still have proper marriages so whether one should always go according to astrological charts it depends primarily on one's own understanding of life one's own understanding of astrology if one has not had one has been brought up in a one has been brought up in a culture where one has a lot of faith in astrology and one knows astrologers in whom one has faith Astro just not just faith in astrology but astrologers in whom one has faith then one may feel then they may consult astrologers and then govern one's life choices according to astrologers guidance but it is not that if one doesn't have any faith in astrology if, if people if people don't have any faith in astrology and then they are prohibited from making some relationship just because astrological charts say no then they may become too alienated from the whole body of higher knowledge just because of that particular mandatory that particular insistence and then that may be detrimental for them so what should not be done is astrology should not be used as a rationalization for one's own short sighted choices there's one devotee uh, mata ji she has written a book how to mess your life with astrology <laughs> 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 and say somebody is uh, in a marriage which is unhappy 
then that person thinks that maybe you know we should break up this marriage. So then they go to one astrologer, he says this is a good marriage, you can work. Then they go to second astrologer. Then like that you go to 25 astrologers till you find one astrologer says this marriage is not going to work. And then use that to break up the marriage. <laughs> so what we are doing, we are not really relying on astrology. Here what we are doing is, we have our own impulses and we want to act on those impulses. And we use astrology to justify that. So, you know, astrology is not a substitute for responsibility. <laughs> we are ultimately responsible for our actions and whatever actions we take, astrology can give us some guidance. Okay, here you may have bigger, bigger incompatibility, so bigger challenges. Here you may have lesser challenges. Here these things work out well. But it's not that astrology indemnifies us from our own responsibility. And based on our understanding of taking up responsibility in relationships, and based on our own faith in astrology, our own understanding of uh, what life is, people can, if they feel it's important, they should, it is, it is good to consult astrologers, but it is not good to impose astrology on people who do not have that faith. Because that can alienate them and later on, they will use that to blame others. You know, you said like this, you said like that, you said like that. So if somebody has to consider astrology, then overall, they need to have an understanding of astrology properly. Only when they have a proper understanding of, not, not that they have to study astrology lifelong, but a basic understanding of how astrology works, if they have that understanding, it should not be that astrology is used as a, as, as I said, a short, as a rationalization for either doing what we want to do or not doing what we don't want to do. We have to recognize that we have to take responsibility for our actions. And for guiding our actions, we can take astrology as one guide. But it should not be the sole determiner and it does not absolve us of our responsibilities. Does it answer your question? Thank you very much.